You've got mail. Today we're reaching into the listener mailbag to answer a question from Lana's Kitten on Twitter. She writes, I'm not jealous of rich people because of the things they have. I'm jealous of rich people because they get to pursue their passions in life without having to work a grueling 40 plus hours a week, literally just to get by. My dream is to work in the film TV industry, behind the camera, so screenwriting and directing, but that's never going to happen because it's not like I have connections or the money to produce my own film and I need to focus on a realistic long-term career goal. I do write as a hobby, but it's hard when you work a job where you're on your feet all day and will be even harder once I start studying again to go into a field which is achievable and I'm interested in, but obviously not as passionate about as film and fashion and writing. Obviously, you can do stuff that you genuinely enjoy on the side, and I spend most of my free time writing and editing stuff. But as is the case with most other creative industries, it's very hard to get your foot in the door without connections and having time. And resources to attempt to do this is a luxury. It's naive to believe otherwise. Can you help? Thanks, Lana's Kitten, for your question, and thank you for listening. Welcome to another episode of the Next Simple Step Podcast. I'm Paul Goldsmith. And I help creative people connect to their purpose by taking action. And in all transparency, while Lana's Kitten did tweet that, she didn't ask specifically for my help, but I'm going to offer my perspective anyway, with the hope that it might help you with your crazy ambitious goals. First up, if you believe it's never going to happen, it's a near certainty, it won't. I know how frustrating it can be to watch somebody accomplish your dreams and you're busy just hustling the nine to five to try to pay the bills. However, resenting other people doesn't hurt them. It only holds you back. If you've got a dream, you've got a vision for who you want to become or a goal you want to accomplish, make sure it's a meaningful one because you're going to have to eliminate all the other options. You're going to have to decide this is the overarching goal for the foreseeable future. Once you have a big, audacious, overarching goal that aligns with your values and what truly matters to you, then it's time to ensure that you eliminate most every other option. Burn the ships. If it's a creative endeavor you want to pursue, like screenwriting, and you can't do it after a long day of your job, then get up two hours early before the job and work on it then. That might mean that you can't stay out late with friends, or you can't watch Netflix, or maybe you work it on your lunch hour. But you prioritize the thing that is most valuable to you. And so if you have a huge creative goal, a career that you'd like to pursue, How can you maximize the time you spend working on that now and see how far you can get in the next three years time with concentrated effort and don't wait for somebody to come pick you. So for example, if you wanted to be a screenwriter, then you could start writing local plays or maybe you start writing films for a nonprofit that you really love that would appreciate the help. And you work your way up from there. Mr. Beast didn't wait for a Hollywood movie producer to call him. He started creating YouTube videos from his bedroom when he was 13. Now in his mid-20s, he has close to 185 million subscribers and on the path to being a billionaire by the time he's 40. So it worked out for him. Individual results may vary, but he didn't wait for the call. He picked himself and he chose one clear path and a goal. So what's your big overarching goal and what are you waiting for to get started? I firmly believe that you're going to get a lot further if you start now and make daily action moving forward and making progress on that goal. You'll certainly get a lot further than if you just sit around bemoaning the fact that you don't have the right connections. Well, how do you get connections? You go meet people. Maybe in Lana's case, she should move to LA. Location does matter. When I was first starting my career in radio, I went to radio career fairs. I visited radio stations. I went to remotes where DJs were broadcasting live. If there was a radio person at it, I was there. 
because that's how I made my connections. And if you remember AOL, or before that, it was called America Online. I started the show with the You've Got Mail sound effect, hearkening back to that day when AOL first started, they had these little, I don't know what to call them other than home pages when you logged on. And they had one specifically for ABC Radio. And I used that page to directly reach out to every radio station that was listed there and started dialogues with stations across the country, KGO in San Francisco, for example, and asked these radio professionals everything I could about what it takes to have a career in radio. And when I decided to become an entrepreneur, I joined a coaching program with other entrepreneurs called Strategic Coach and met and learned from people that were further down the road in their entrepreneurial journey than me. Also, as I mentioned a year ago, I decided to get into franchising. I hired a franchise coach to teach me about how to navigate the world of franchising. Coaches really are the cheat code to advancing and leveling up in your life. And if you can't afford to pay coaches. There's tons of free resources like this podcast, which I thank you for listening, but also on YouTube. Just search the topic that you're most interested in and learn from the people that are already doing the thing you want to do and then commit to those practices because uh, it really is choose your own adventure. More news soon on a second franchise, but you'll have to keep listening for that. In the meantime, what I want to do is encourage you to follow that big audacious goal. Set some parameters around what time and space you're going to commit to achieving that goal. Progress, not perfection, but can you schedule out daily action to prioritize your purpose? By definition, you prioritize the things that you give your attention to, and it's the most valuable resource you have is your attention. And so what are you waiting for? No one is going to pick you. No one's going to navigate this path for you. It's not going to be easy. If it's worth doing, it's certainly going to take effort on your part. And you have to anticipate that there's going to be distractions. There's going to be setbacks. But if it's meaningful to you, it's worth committing to a life that reflects your values and passions and inspirations. You don't quit at the first sign of resistance. Lest I be accused of being a cruel optimist, I learned this term recently, cruel optimism, which in effect means people that are positive or try to encourage you to attain your goals, but don't acknowledge that the odds are against you, that the system is rigged and other people have an unfair advantage. I fully recognize that there are people with economic advantages or talent or other connections, but what are you going to do about that? It is what it is. You can choose to pursue your goals or not. You can choose to make it up and then make it happen. And you're going to have a lot better shot than lamenting the fact that the system's rigged. And even if you don't achieve the ultimate goal, you will change as a result and get a lot further than you thought you were going to get. And along the way, you may discover a new goal that you want to pursue instead. Just don't quit on yourself. Prioritize your purpose today because your life matters. How you spend your time matters and no one is going to prioritize your purpose like you. If I can be helpful to you, I would be honored to do that. You can schedule a free discovery coaching call now at nextsimplestep.com and I'll talk to you next time. 